Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Check It Out, the library talk show that lets you know what's happening in and around the Bethel Park Public Library. We're your hosts, Elaine Volpe and Christine McIntosh. And in our episode today, we're going to do a few um, fun things, too. Um, yeah, switch things up a little bit. The adult program room is finished. It's completed, and we just started using it, so we're going to take you on a little tour. And then we have some new staff members that have come on board, so we're going to introduce you to them. Four to be exact, and a fifth one by the end of the month. Yes, indeed. Um, so for adults this month, we have Future Tools. It's a class um, on Tuesday, March 12th from 1230 to 1.30. And uh, it's a one-hour class. It'll cover free and freemium tools such as Google Gemini, which used to be Bard, uh, ChatGTP, and many other futurist tools that are now available. You'll learn about some artificial intelligence, text-to-speech, and image creators. And as always, if you can't make that time, you can um, schedule a one-on-one -on -one technology appointment with the librarians up in the reference department. Um, Rob and I went to a seminar on AI, just a short one. Just a, it was overwhelming. They just yeah. introduced some of the major ones. But I've been playing with Copilot, which is a Microsoft product because we have that on our computers, mm -hmm. and it's just been right now. It's I fun. know Rob's very excited about yeah. it. Anytime it, I talk to him, that's somehow AI becomes part of the conversation. Yes, it is. It's the new thing. But it is. So. Yeah, it's very exciting. On Thursday, March twenty-first, we have all about house plants. This will be in council chambers. Um, this is uh, presented by Lindsay Thompson of Ruby Flora Plant Shop, which is here in Bethel. Ever wonder where to start with house plants? Which ones can tolerate low light? Which ones need a lot of water? Plants, plants bring life to your home, and when you can successfully keep them alive, which I have difficulty doing, um, you're growing right along with them. So you'll learn tips and tricks from the pros at Ruby Flora. And then a big thing coming up is the uh, total solar eclipse. Right. A few which, of our staff members are traveling to Yes, traveling see to that. the best path. Mm -hmm. I mean, we'll be able to see it here. I guess even Erie or Cleveland. Beth's going to Erie. Okay. Yeah. And I know Rob and me are going somewhere. It might be Cleveland. I think they're going to Cleveland. Are they? Yeah. So the, the, the solar eclipse is on April 8, 2024. So we're having a, well, first of all, let me just say we have these groovy, Solar, solar eclipse viewing glasses um, on sale at the library for a dollar. They're just it's just cost recovery. Last time we were supposed to get some, we had that the eclipse. I don't know, probably four or five years ago, mm -hmm. we were supposed to get free ones from an organization and we didn't get them. So I just preempted and just went ahead and bought. Um, we have a hundred pair of them. So if you if you're interested, you want to come in and get them. But in the meantime, we have solar observing in the 2024 total solar eclipse on March 23rd. That's a Saturday at 2 o'clock. This is presented by Larry McHenry, who is an uh, ast astronomer. I was going to say astrologist. astrologist. Totally different. <laughs> okay. So he'll introduce solar features visible um, and safe solar observing techniques using both white light and H-alpha solar filters. Additionally, he'll discuss where to go and how to observe the upcoming total solar eclipse on April 8th. Um, and then afterwards, weather permitting, he'll set up um, a small solar telescope outside so that the audience can safely observe the um, sun and any solar features that would be visible that day, like solar flares or yeah. some else. Pretty neat. Else. Yeah. Um, oh, this one I like, but I like history. We have a, a presentation on the Battle of Monongahela on March 27th, that's Wednesday, at 6.30 in the evening. This is presented by Sean McIntyre, Public Engagement and Operations Manager at the Braddock's Battlefield History Center. Um, so this was July 9th, 1755. The British Army marched along with soldiers, workmen, teamsters, slaves, camp followers, women, and their children. Their plan was to construct a road to the French, which were at Fort Duquesne, lay siege to the fort, and return the forks of the Ohio to British control. The French commander at Fort Duquesne and his native allies had a very different plan for the British forces. The Battle of the Monongahela is a battle that changed world history and led to the first global war. So we'll discuss what the led up to the battle, the battle itself, and then the effects that it's had on history. 
Um, and who's that being presented by? That is being presented by Sean McIntyre, and he is the Public Engagement and Operations Manager at Braddock's Battlefield History Center. Interesting. Which is in North Braddock. Um, oh, this should be fun. Belly dance for everybody. <gasps> I didn't know we were doing this. Yes. So years ago, it has to be at least 10 years ago, I took a couple belly dancing lessons with my sister-in-law, Karen. Mm -hmm. It was like over in Squirrel Hill or somewhere in the Oakland area. So much fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's well, there. I'm we'll so excited. So belly dancing for everyone on Tuesday, April 2nd at 6.30. Um, this is a workshop by Amy Cotrill. So belly dance is an ancient dance from many countries which has traveled and spread all over the world. This workshop will prevent belly dance for everyone, introducing a brief history, demonstration, and a dance class. All are welcome, so adults and kids. So much fun. No experience necessary. Um, is it being held in council, I would it's imagine? It's being ha held in council chambers, and we do okay. ask that you register, because we can only take 32, I think. Okay. And then um, something that the library is doing during the month of March um, Women's History Month. We're collecting feminine hygiene products that we will then donate to SHIM. And, um, and so they'll stay in our area. But period poverty is real and period equity should be real as well. So menstruating is a basic fact of human existence. Uh, menstrual hygiene products are necessities, not luxuries, and so should be treated as such. However, they cannot be purchased with food stamps or through the Women, Infant, and Children program, the WIC program. Um, so we're going to try and help, you know, put a little dent in that in that problem. And um, so we have a collection box upstairs. If you are interested in donating, but can't come to the library or you know for whatever reason. We do have a wish list on Amazon. If you go to our Facebook page, you'll find that link there. We made a wish list of items um, that to collect. So we all, we actually received our first. Yes, I'm we not did. Pull it out, but we received our first donation through the mail today. So thank you. Um, I think it's an important issue. I know Carla. Extremely. Carla used to work in the city schools and. Um, like a lot of the girls wouldn't come to school, they couldn't mm -hmm. come to school, or they would, you know, use oh, tube like socks. You said it's a real thing. It's a real yeah. thing. I mean, we don't think it about it addressed. often. It does no. need to be addressed. So for so many of us, it's just something that we take for granted. Right. So we're just trying to do our part, a little part, to help alleviate the issue. So um, that's through the whole month of March as celebrating women's history. So. And then those products that collected are going to SHIM? Going to SHIM, so they'll be, um, you know, stay in our area, stay in yeah. the South Hills. Great. That's what I have. Okay. So on over to me, I guess. Um, March uh, kicked off our spring session. Mm -hmm. So yesterday was the first day of our early literacy classes starting back up, and we had so much fun. It was so wonderful to see all the families again and to welcome many new families as well. Um, so just a quick reminder, we have Toddler Tuesdays that happen on Tuesdays, obviously, at both 10 and 11 o'clock. There's no need to register. And that particularly particular early literacy class is intended for two and three-year-olds. Mother Goose on the Loose happens on Wednesday mornings, again, 10 or 11 o'clock. And that's most appropriate for actually babies and toddlers. So we say zero to three. Um, we kind of have a wide range there. It's a very highly interactive, engaging early literacy class. Um, Baby Jam is on Thursday mornings at 10 and 11. That's for your youngest ones, but again, we say up to two, so zero to two-year-olds. Um, perfect bonding time with your baby. Um, 30 minutes of just songs and rhymes and uh, knee bounces and that sort of thing. On Fridays, we have our preschool power class, which targets preschoolers ages three and a half to five years of age, those getting ready to head into kindergarten. Ms. Heather focuses on a different letter of the alphabet each week and does a wonderful job um, preparing those kids for kindergarten through her preschool power story time. We call them story times sometimes. We call them early literacy classes. We're trying so to when stick I refer with the early literacy classes, but we, everybody well, because, knows story time. Right. And it is very much a story time. That's what we do. We read stories and we sing songs. But we also, um, you know, teach parents and caregivers about um, the importance of early literacy and the five key practices. And we try to model appropriate 
behaviors and give them just lots of tips for them to use with their babies and toddlers along the way. So it is more of a class than a story time. So, but mm -hmm. those, we, we use them interchangeably. Um, and then other stuff coming up in March, we have um, Art Box happening on Saturday, March 16th. Art teacher Michelle Kirk visits uh, seasonally and she does um, some art classes for little ones and for teens alike. But Art Box is intended for K through four students. And um, we call it that because like you never know what she's gonna pull out of her art box. It's always a surprise. And she has so many different kinds of projects. It's a fun day to come and just kind of see what she has planned. Um, Beaver Habitat Exploration is happening on Saturday, March 23rd at 1 p.m. I think I talked about this on the last mm -hmm. show, but it's very interesting to me. Beavers are second only to us, humans, mm -hmm. when it comes to changing the landscape in which they live. Um, so you can come learn more about um, beavers and their dams and their lodges that they build and their habitat um, through this class, which is presented by Allegheny County Parks. Trailblazer Book Club is happening in March. I believe um, the person we are focusing on this month is Milton Hershey. Yeah. Have you ever been to Hershey, PA? I've been. It's a fun place to visit. I have been to Hershey, PA for a library conference many years ago, but uh -huh. I've never toured the Hershey factory. Oh, you need to make a I know. point to do that. It's only three hours away. I know. Three well, and a half, and maybe. Tonight, uh, all the wrestlers leave for states, which are in. Oh, which is in Hershey, which right? Which is in Hershey, yeah. So. Um, but you're not going. I'm not going. I have to Bummer. work, but I think Bill might be going. So fun. So yeah, very interesting museum. Very in interesting history behind that. So um, if you're interested in learning more, join our Trailblazer Book Club. There's still time to do so. In April, it'll be somebody new, but I know in March it's uh, Milton Hershey. That's intended for grades three and four. Um, for our teens, I'm trying to think if we have anything in March. We are still recruiting for our teen advisory board. So feel free to join us on Saturday, March 23rd at 10.30 a.m. for a tab chat. Teen advisory board, we call it tab for short. It's just a time to come in, chat with us, give us some ideas. And this is gonna be the donut and coffee edition. So if you come, Yum. we'll have some refreshments for you to enjoy. Um, Dungeons and Dragons is still going strong and we are gonna run it throughout the rest of the school year. We won't during the summer but we still have three, March, April, and May. So our next Dungeons and Dragons meeting is Thursday, March 21st, and we start at five o'clock. Really to get in a full like D&D, &D, I guess Session. they call them games. Yeah, it's really like two and a half to three hours. So that's why we start at five, so we can wrap up by 7.30, 8 o'clock. Um, so yeah, I know that's dinner time. Try to eat before you go. We do provide some snacks, bring your own drink, because um, you'll be here for a while, mm -hmm. but it's a lot of fun. Um, and then I guess I should just touch upon some things coming up in April as well. We will have another 3D printing class. I know we get a lot of inquiries about that. We will have another one on Monday, April 1st at 6.30 p.m. Um, we're going to be having another Family STEM Day on Saturday, April 27th. That's a drop-by event anytime between 11 and 2 p.m. You can kind of tour different stations. We'll have our different um, STEM materials out for you to experiment with, different projects. Um, and Ms. Dolores is doing a stitch lab. So join us to create fiber art projects while learning hand sewing skills. Something that I never learned. Oh my gosh. And I, I should did. I mean I like I should at least know how to like sew on a button or something. Oh, and I, I can really do that. my thing I can I can fix hems, you know, like I can Good for you. I can yeah. if your sleeves are too long, I can take them up. I can oh. um, And did your mom teach you that? Or your yeah. grandma? Did you learn it in school? School. Okay, because I took home Mac. I, I guess I, I remember sewing an ice cream pillow, so I guess I have like basic, but I never did it beyond that. No, I so. loved it. So I make, I make costumes. Like I love, I'll have to find some pictures of the costumes. I, when I was a children's librarian, oh, cool. and we would like, you know, dress, I would do dress up in like, you know, Victorian or uh, colonial or, you know, whatever. But not all by hand sewing, or do you uh, sew I use the machine, but okay. I, yeah, but still, I can sew yeah. on a button and, um, you know, a snap. Anything like that, but I do I do like That's to great. sew. I do like to sew. Yeah. I'll tell you who my husband has sewing skills. Get out. He reupholstered all the seats in his boat by himself. Wow. Yeah. That's impressive. He is impressive. He's impressive. That man yeah. can do He's just so about handy. Anything. He's yeah, very he handy. Yes. Um yeah, and I still have to learn. I told myself this is the year I'm learning how to crochet. I haven't I can learned do yet. Some. But yeah, and I do and I get projects because once in a while I'll get, you know, a bug and I, I wanna 
crochet. Make it's, something, it's yeah. It's very, it's, it's soothing. It's almost meditative. I think once I get the hang of it, it would be relaxing for me. So Michelle, our Cirque supervisor, is always the one I go to when I don't understand a pattern. Because mm -hmm. I can't, I can't, you know, do yeah. some of the more... Intricate. Yes. Or I forget. I know she showed me, but it's been three years and I don't remember. And right. I'll be like, show me again how to do this. So yeah. I, I really do enjoy it. I think like pieces of clothing would definitely be daunting. Like maybe I can learn how to make a blanket where you're just doing the squares. Yes, doing right? the squares over Or a scarf. Over. But I, I have a pattern for cat bookmarks that I want to do because I think do. that would be a fun project. That would be fun. Yeah. Speaking of crocheting, we also have the Crochet Club. You will not see that in our team flyer, um, but that is still running again throughout the rest of the school year. I don't know whether or not it will continue in the summer, but we do have a group of girls who meet once a month, no, twice a month actually, over in the teen lounge. They bring their projects That's and they so just cool. sit and crochet together. I love it. Yeah. I love it. So I think that's what's happening on our side. Um, we have any announcements? Just an, I just want to remind everybody the library will be closed on March 31st in honor of the Easter holiday, but we'll see you Monday morning, uh, well, April 1st, April Fool's Day yeah. at 10 a.m. No fooling. We'll be there. Uh -huh. um, and then, so. Wish everybody a happy St. Patrick's yeah. Day. I know you might be marching in the parade I'm this year. In this the is parade fun. Downtown with uh, Bookmobile will be there and then representatives from different libraries in Allegheny County. So we're all part of the Allegheny County Library Association. So mm -hmm. um, if you're down there, look for the Bookmobile and the librarians that are marching behind and give us a wave. March is also March Madness Month. And I don't mm -hmm. know if you do any of the basketball. I, like I don't like basketball. I can't no. stand the squeaking on the court. I can't oh, watch it. Oh, basketball is so much fun to watch. But we kind of have our own kind of March Madness projects going on. And ACLA um, actually put together a picture book March Madness bracket, um, which you can vote upon. So we'll share that link with you. I don't know if you have a favorite picture book. The ones they selected, they kind of got input from children's librarians all throughout the okay. county. I haven't right? looked. I saw but it on Facebook. there's so many good ones. So I I'm haven't. very interested. It's going to come down to which two. I like the stinky cheese, man. See, that's, I'm not in children's department anymore. So yeah, that's a class. My, that's still popular. My choices are, would be older. Yeah. But that's, I love that book. Yeah, that's John Sheska. He has uh -huh. one of them on there, but not stinky cheese, man. Okay. So okay. check that out. But yes, happy March to you. We will see you again um, in April. And let's head on upstairs and start that tour. So we now have an adult program room available so that we have more space to ha host classes and programs um, specifically for adults or older adults. The adult program room was completed at the end of February. It is, as you can see, already in use. Um, so come on by and check out our program room. Okay, so joining me now is Nicole Zalek, one of our newest um, hires here in the Children's Department. Welcome aboard, Nicole. We are so thrilled to have you join our team. Thank you. Um, and even though you are new to libraries, I know you are no stranger to books. Yeah. You currently also work at Barnes & Noble. I do. And I know that you are an avid reader, having <laughs> been so ever since you were a child because you actually visited this library when you were a youngster. And oh, I remember I that, which makes me feel rather old. But it's also pretty cool and pretty special. Um, so tell me about your favorite childhood memory of, of visiting the library. Do, is there a memory that kind of stands out in your mind? Maybe it was a class you attended or? Um, um, I think the thing I really remember most was uh, volunteering here as a teenager, right. right here in the in the children's section with you. Yes. I helped out with some toddler time. I helped out with your uh, Spanish class, your cooking class. I do class remember that. Back yes. in the day. So yeah, I'm glad to, to yes. be here again. Do you know I'm still doing cooking classes? That's so cool. I think cool. that was like a one-time so I'm doing cool. what's cooking. Yeah, and I'm still enjoying that. So, yes. Yeah. And volunteering is still something that we value so greatly here. And mm -hmm. our team base really is growing. But you were kind of one of the first oh. first volunteers here at the I library. Love teen that. volunteers. I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> Um, okay, so you're an avid reader. I, I know you read um, gamut of things, right? Juvenile all mm -hmm. the way, you know, young adult up to adult. But tell me about the best adult book that you've read in the past year. I will talk to anyone who will listen to me okay. about uh, Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow by Gabrielle Zevin. It's about... Um, I don't know this. So, so it's two people who... Um, met as kids and then found each other later in life and create a video game together. Now, I'm not someone cool. who plays video games, but this book is so much more. It's about um, collaboration and creating something that's going to outlast yourself. It's about platonic love and friendship. It's I love beautiful. it. What year? Is it a newer book? 
It came it? out, I think, in 2023, September of 2023. Okay. So it's pretty Sounds pretty like it's new. a good one for my um, book club. I might have to add that to our list. Absolutely. Recommend All it. All right. Yes. Thanks for the recommendation. Sure. Thank you again for being on the show and uh, kind of saying hello to everyone. Again, we are so well, um, happy that you are on our team, and we welcome you officially on board. Oh, thank you so much. And another one of our new staff members is Miranda DeFrank. Now, Miranda's been here about a month, at least on this side. You've been an employee of the Bethel Park Library for how many years? Two, yeah, just over two years. Two years, but you are now officially on the children's side. What have you been enjoying most about working with children's staff? So when I came over, I go out to the area preschools and I do outreach for them with story times. And I love the children in this area. They are so well behaved. And I know that it's comes down. You've had great experiences <laughs> so yes. far. That's not always the case. But I think you're right. But that also, you know, speaks volumes to you and how you are conducting the, the story time. Oh, thank and you. Yes. So kudos to you on that. Thank you. Uh, they are so much fun. And you don't get sick of getting giving the same story time over and over again. No, I, I do enjoy have to say it. That she is visiting seven centers, multiple classes at each center. Yeah. Um, but it's wonderful. It's it wonderful is. what you it do. It absolutely and is. And the other piece of that is, of course, making our custom book bins for our daycare and preschool yes. teachers. Um, so just a little shout out about that. If there is a teacher in the area um, who is looking to supplement their lesson plans, mm -hmm. their circle times, mm -hmm. know that we are happy to help with that. And Miss Miranda here would happily put together a customized book bin for you on whatever theme mm -hmm. um, you needed for that month. So Absolutely. I know that keeps you busy, too. Yes, it does. And I'm um, just working on one right now. How about that? <laughs> but your favorite thing, is, then, is visiting and just meeting all those yes. um, new faces and yes. seeing them every month and absolutely getting to absolutely. share the love of books with them yes There's nothing greater yep. great I also know that you are an avid um, Star Wars fan correct I don't even know if avid <laughs> I mean you're a little bit of a Star Wars nerd if I may <laughs> yes so maybe that's even a good more. yes yeah uh, when did you first get into Star Wars did you love it as a kid is it something that your husband got you interested in I've always loved sci-fi okay. so I can't remember I do believe I was younger when I saw the first movies okay um, and that would have been the 70s movies not the ones that were out in the right. 2000s right so um, but yeah it's always been my thing and then now with all the new things that are out with the cartoons on Disney Plus and all the shows that are along with that it's just and I'm kind sure of... your son then is also oh absolutely as... <laughs> yeah. absolutely how can he not be right <laughs> um so do you have a favorite Star Wars character of course and I think it's a lot of people's favorite character but of course it's Grogu I mean because he's just so adorable and we love the Mandalorian say, I'm not even sure who Grogu <laughs> is like my favorite would probably be C-3PO or R2-D2 okay um, BB-8 that's my husband I so know, I get that you know Yoda of course but I don't mm -hmm. know who Grogu is he's new he's from the Mandalorian okay so yes okay he's a new but he's of Gro of Yoda's species gotcha, so gotcha. he's like that Okay, so this is probably a good time to plug our upcoming Star Wars program. This Absolutely. Spring, happening on May 4th, yes. as in May the 4th be with you. Mm -hmm. Tell us what's going to be going on that day. So it's going to be Saturday, May 4th. Luckily, it's on a Saturday this year, which is great. So we get to celebrate that. It's from 1 to 4. It'll be here in the Children's Department and over in um, Council Chambers. We're going to have, there's going to be 10 different sessions set up. Pin the tail on Grogu, some memory games, um, build your own dream droid but that's going to be like yes that'll be a paper craft so that'll be a lot of fun okay. and maybe and some special guests <gasps> maybe mm. you have to come to to find, find out, out. Yep. yeah that sounds All good right. good time and is a registration for that event yes it i think it opens on march 4th march 15th i'm sorry so definitely need to register for that absolutely well thanks so much and again officially welcome you aboard we're so happy to have you thank you i appreciate it thank you and joining us now is Dolores Colorosa, another one of our newest hires here in the Children's Department. And Dolores, I feel like you've been in the library world even longer than I have, right? We're talking 20 plus years. Um, what is it, what do you love about libraries that has made you stay in the field for so long? That's a really it's a tough question. Tough question. I know. Tough question, but easy to answer. I just think um, when I'm in a library, when I'm working in a library, I just feel such joy inside seeing the kids come in, seeing the families, meeting them all. Um, but, but beyond that, it's like being a small part of a bigger picture. So everybody has a role in the library that brings it together to 
make it that this, is so well said make it this great community yep. space so yep. when people come in see us happy we're, and welcoming I mean it's just a welcoming place for them to come and then being able to either recommend books or make them aware of programs and programs that are coming up right? that we have and um, everything's free and free services and just it what doesn't a great get any better than the hub we are and it just brings joy to me Yay, that's perfectly said such a great answer um, now I know you love to read as we all I do, do right do. do you have a favorite author Oh, um, I would say Suzanne Bloom, which we have talked about I had about a feeling before. that you were going to say here, you were because fortunate enough to meet Suzanne I Bloom. I actually met her three times. Wow. Um, once at a conference and twice um, as an author that came into a library for a program. And I think it was just super cool and I connected with her because she's so down to earth. And she just really highlights what it's truly like to be an author and she showed kids um, her beginning works even as a kid like what mm -hmm. she would sketch and then she has this like tube of all her artwork and she very brings cool. it out and just shows everybody that so um, very cool think she's one of my favorites and we of course have Suzanne Bloom's books here in our collection yes. so if you haven't read one of hers be sure to check one out soon okay last question Dolores um, so we know you love libraries and you love books what else do you love like what do you enjoy doing in your spare time when you're not working here at the library yeah reading's definitely number one but a close second is cross stitching so i've been cross stitching probably since i've been in high school wow. and i give away more of my pieces than i keep um That's which wonderful. is awesome because when i go visit people that i gave you can still see them on their walls so Aww. um cross stitching cooking baking <gasps> you are a great um, cook and not that, that I this is to. a hobby but something that makes me happy is of course spending as much time as I can with my two beautiful granddaughters. Of course, yes. Who have visited the library here uh, who, a few yes, times. They are regulars yes, now. wonderful. I'm happy to say. Yes. Yay. Well, thank you for joining us and thank you for officially being part thank of our you. new team. We are thrilled to have you and we look forward to creating um, you know, many memories together. Thank you. It is an honor to be back here in my home community. So thank you. Thank you. So thanks everyone for joining us. As always, if you have any questions on any of the things that we've talked about on today's show, you know what to do. Go ahead and give us a call. Visit our website. Or better yet, stop in and see us in person. See you later, everyone.